Jonathan Hamilton started the Hamilton Airshow Company in 1995. Jonathan had the belief that there was a gaping hole in the transport market, both for passengers and freight that had not been fulfilled by available transport mediums. Furthermore, he had a radical design solution to a problem facing airship builders. The major problem with airships up until now was how to build them quickly, cost effectively, and to be able to mass produce them. All mammals are built using an endoskeleton with a central spine, and this is the principal structural member. Historically, airships have been built with an exoskeleton like insects. The structure was on the outside, and this is the difference between the old and the new. Not only did this mean that there was a lot of structure, but also that it was very fragile. Furthermore, they had to build them one at a time. The Hamilton Airship Company has a modular design that can be mass produced. The Hamilton design looks like a large whale. The central spine acts like a spindle around which several rings strung like bicycle wheels are placed. The so-called airships that people see advertising various companies over cities around the world are not airships but blimps. These blimps are nothing more than aerodynamically shaped balloons that have a power module on the bottom. They have severe structural limitations and cannot do the tasks that can be performed by a rigid airship. It is like the difference between a windsurfer and a supertanker. The Hamilton airship structure has been analyzed using the very latest in computer systems, the same systems as used by NASA and Boeing. It was proven by Denel, the largest aerospace company in Africa, to be a world-beating design. Denel manufactures components for Airbus and Rolls-Royce, as well as building the largest ground attack helicopter in the world. In 1998, the Hamilton Airship Company built and flew a 145-foot-long prototype called the HA-44. The airship you see in this video is a prototype and as such was not made to be aesthetically beautiful, but was made for test purposes. This was, after all, the first rigid airship in the world since 1937. Hugo Eckner, the last managing director of Zeppelin, said, If we do not keep this technology, our grandchildren will have to reinvent it and the Hamilton Airship Company had to do just that. The airship underwent more than 50 hours of flight tests, and these tests proved that the Hamilton Airship Company was on the right track. The airship incorporated advanced features such as fly-by-wire and vectored thrust. Similar systems are used by the world's most advanced fighter jets like the Harrier jump jet. The Hamilton Airship Company set several design goals three of which were that the aircraft could be rapidly manufactured, secondly, that it should take off and land vertically, and thirdly, that it should prove the data gathered during the static computer analysis. These design goals were all met. The problem of rapid manufacture was solved due to the Hamilton design being modular. Previous landing problems were removed by the incorporation of a bow thruster. The bow thruster is capable of turning through 360 degrees and allows the pilot to place the bow of the ship exactly where he wants it. Ground handling in the past was a major problem for airship operators, needing up to 500 men to land the ship. The Hamilton Airship Company has developed a completely automatic docking system that with development only one ground crew member will be needed because the bow thruster allows such accurate low speed control. As the airship burns fuel, it becomes lighter and therefore tends to rise. In the past, venting the lifting gas counteracted this. Helium is expensive and this would ruin the otherwise miserly running costs of the vehicle. The Hamilton design allows for the compression of air into the spine and up to a ton of weight can be added in flight at the same rate as fuel is burnt. To augment this, the ship is fitted with a water recovery system on the engines. When the airship lands, it can control its buoyancy exactly and therefore make perfect landings. The gas bags were made of a special plastic manufactured in Britain. This material is not only gas impermeable, but incredibly light and strong. Unlike a blimp, a rigid airship has several gas bags. This means that should one break for any reason, there are still several more in reserve. A blimp has no structure to hold and protect the bags, but also only has one bag 
a failure of this bag is usually catastrophic. The tail fins of the Hamilton airship are also revolutionary in design. At low speed, an airship requires very large areas, and at high speed, smaller fins are better. The Hamilton design has both, and are optimized for the job. Smaller boost engines push air over these surfaces at low speed, which gives the pilot thrust vectoring at the tail to complement the bow thruster. The Hamilton Airship Company has patented its design throughout the world and is the undisputed leader in rigid airship technology. The Hamilton Airship is very cost effective to run and maintain. The production HA 140 airship is capable of carrying 25 tons over 6,000 miles and will only cost £1,500 per ton for the trip. Comparatively, an aircraft with a similar range and payload would cost at least £2,400 per ton. The airship, because it can take off and land vertically, does away with the supporting infrastructure requirements. An aeroplane cannot drop it into a manufacturer's yard to collect its goods. It needs a truck or a train to deliver the goods to the airport first. The airship can take goods directly from the supplier to the user. The airship fits in the gap between aeroplanes and ships. Ships will transport anything anywhere in weeks. The aeroplane in hours, the airship in days. For instance, London to New York in two and a half days. Within five years, the Hamilton Airship Company intends on building an airship capable of lifting 500 tons of freight or passengers. This will allow car manufacturers to fly 350 cars anywhere in the world in a matter of days. The airship is to the physical transportation of goods, what the internet is to the transportation of information. Passengers will be accommodated in a huge cabin. Each one will have a cabin 12 feet by 12 feet with an ensuite bathroom. They will dine in the restaurant, dance in the ballroom, and work out the tensions of the world in the onboard gym or health spa. The airship will offer the luxury of the Orient Express, but in the sky. The airship flies low to the ground, usually at only 500 feet, and has picture windows, the combination of which will give passengers an unprecedented view of the world. They will see icebergs, polar bears, whales, and Eskimos in the two days it takes to fly from London to New York. They will see the Alps, the Mediterranean, the Pyramids, the Serengeti Plains, the Nile, Zanzibar and Victoria Falls on the, their way to South Africa. And all this in just four days. Currently, there are more cruise ships in the world than there have been at any other time in history. Passengers are on waiting lists to join some of the cruises. The Hamilton Airship will exploit this market. American Express Travel Division said to the company that at least six aircraft would be required for the North Atlantic market alone. In short, the airship will be the ultimate experience. It is not transport, it is travel. It is not the destination, it is the journey. In order to demonstrate this, the Hamilton Airship Company is developing the HA-80. At 263 feet, it is twice the size of the HA-44 prototype and will be able to cross the Atlantic during 2001. This ship will have six cabins providing accommodation for 12 passengers and crew. Three members of the press will be invited along to report back to the world about the first crossing of the Atlantic by airship since 1937. This event will show the world that Britain and the Hamilton Airship Company have the transport solution for the new millennium and that it has world-beating technology. The HA-80 will go into full-scale production as a short-range 10-ton transport and is ideally suited to the role of naval maritime patrol and tourist activities such as whale watching. The HA-140 will provide a 25-ton machine a year later that will be the largest aircraft in the world with the longest range of any aircraft in the world. Apart from luxury cruisers, it will be used as a mobile hospital that will be capable of flying to any corner of the globe without stopping and providing first world emergency medical care and relief to victims of war or natural disasters. This design we're working on is scalable. A rigid airship for scalable. And we have a, an airship at the moment. This first airship is 50,000 cubic meters. It can lift 20 tonnes, 16 to 20 tonnes, depending on configuration. But because it's scalable, and because we're planning to build bigger airships, and because in the past they built airships for 200,000 cubic metres, there's nothing to stop us producing airships for 50,000, 150,000, 250,000, 500,000. And those big airships will be able to lift 100 tonnes. There's no technical problem. That could be transporting cars. An airship, in a nutshell, is a self-contained infrastructure. Apart from fuel and supplies, it is independent of all ground-based systems, including airports. It can go anywhere and land almost anywhere. 
The airship burns fuel at one-tenth of the rate of aircraft with a similar payload, making it the most environmentally friendly aircraft in the world. The demand placed on resources by the airship through its production and life cycle will make it the most green vehicle on the planet. Airships remain airborne, even if their engines are switched off. In the past, airships such as the Hindenburg were filled with highly flammable hydrogen. The gas inside the Hamilton airship is helium, and apart from being used as a fire extinguisher in factories, it is the same gas as used in children's party balloons. The safety combined with the environmental friendliness of airships and the very low running costs will make it one of the most sought-after machines of all time.